Now let me talk a bit about Iran's program because it's a controversial one. And I personally believe that the evidence that Iran at least had some elements of a nuclear bomb program is compelling. They developed instructions for making uranium metal hemispheres that were found on, on computers in Iran. Now Iran said that they actually got those from um, A.Q. Khan, the Pakistani scientist who was selling bomb technology or uranium enrichment technology um, and related nuclear weapons t uh, instructions. But nonetheless, those were found. There were some tests of implosion type detonation systems. There was missile reentry vehicle engineering work that was discovered by IAEA inspectors. And most importantly, there are communication links between the nuclear program that Iran says was per purely for civilian purposes and missile programs, which are obviously military in purpose. And you would not have those communication links had there not been some kind of nuclear weapons part of the nuclear program. And lastly, Iran has failed to comply fully or failed to cooperate fully with the International Atomic Energy Agency's inspection. Now, if I'm right that Iran has, at least for one period of its time, developed a nuclear weapons program to seek weapons or to seek a weapons option, why might they be do doing so? Well, the first argument is a security-driven program. This began under the Shah, in which he claimed, we now know, in private communications, that we should move forward with the program, keep it peaceful, but if anyone in the neighborhood has the bomb, we must be ready to have it. The Ayatollah Khomeini, who originally opposed the Shah's program and actually helped Iranian, uh, ordered the Iranian government to get rid of that program during the Gulf, during the war between Saddam Hussein and the Iranian revolutionary government, said afterwards that the commanders said we can have no victory for another five years and even then Iran would need a considerable number of laser and nuclear weapons to confront the attacks from Iraq. And Rafsanjani even once said, and it was quoted as saying, the moral teachings of the world are not effective when war reaches a serious age. We should equip ourselves in defensive, offensive use of chemical, bacteriological, and radiological weapons. In this perspective, it is not surprising that Iran would want to maintain a nuclear weapons option. After all, the 2001 U.S. Nuclear Posture Review was leaked, and in that it was pointed out that the United States was aiming a portion of its nuclear weapons uh, for purposes uh, of destroying targets in Iran if necessary. In January 2002, President Bush gave the Axis of Evil speech in which he described Iraq, North Korea, and Iran as members of an Axis of Evil, calling back to the World War II uh, alliance between Japan, Italy, and uh, Nazi Germany, which we soundly defeated. In 2003, after the fall of Baghdad, a senior member of the Pentagon leadership was asked by Sonny Efron of the Los Angeles Times, what lesson should Tehran get from the fall of Baghdad? And he responded, take a number, suggesting you're next in line. In 2006, you see a quote here from Lauren Johnny then the top nuclear negotiator, saying, how can a side that wants to topple the regime also attempt to negotiate? We have legitimate security concerns. So that may explain what Iran did, but there may be other things going on. There's certainly broad support from a domestic level for nuclear power, but there may be, and the public opinion suggests there are splits with respect to nuclear weapons. Moreover, there's some who are in the reformers or in the nuclear power industry or other industry who want international trade precisely for the sake of getting nuclear power. And yet, the Iran Revolutionary Guard Corps seems to be interested in acquiring nuclear weapons. So the question is, who's in charge? Who can make the decisions? The Revolutionary Guard Corps, does it have the ear of the Supreme Leader, or the reformers? and the industry that want to try to reduce sanctions and have legitimate nuclear trade with the West. 
Here one would look at domestic politics, not just international threats. And lastly, there are some who argue that Iran has a norms influence against nuclear weapons. After all, there have been some fatwas issued against chemical and nuclear weapons. It may well be that in Islam that there is a taboo against using nuclear weapons, although some statements by other uh, Muslim clerics suggest the opposite. And it may well be that there is a norm to join the nuclear power club, not the nuclear weapons club. And all this strikes me as influenced very much by the United States. And therefore, I think it's really important that Barack Obama in 2009 stated clearly and with conviction that America will seek a world of peace and security without nuclear weapons and reduced the role, as he did in the 2010 Nuclear Posture Review, to um, reduce the number of nuclear weapons in the United States and the role that they would play. And in the nuclear 10, 2010 Nuclear Posture Review, the United States made an agreement that we would demonstrate that we seriously seek our obligation, that is the Article 6, and we promised that we would not use or threaten to use nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states who are party to the NPT and in compliance with their nuclear non-proliferation obligations. Now that's, I think, a negative security assurance that we won't use nuclear weapons against NPT members who are in compliance. And that's a reduction of the role of nuclear weapons traditionally from uh, a much more ambiguous position earlier on.